We know that resilience is a vital quality in the world of business, just as it is in sport. Any sporting career has its ups and downs, and an ability to bounce back, be resilient, and build the right team around you is the key to success. Well, I'm delighted to say that I am joined by one of HSBC's global brand ambassadors, somebody who knows all about resilience, the tennis Grand Slam winner, Emma Raducanu. And we're going to hear about her journey, and more to the point, how she has built a resilient mindset. Let's start up with your journey because it has been amazing. And when we look at your career, you really cannot avoid talking about winning the US Open in 2021 when you were a teenager. But when you look back at that time, what were the most important mental and physical factors that you believe put you in the right position so that you could claim this huge prize? Yeah, I think at the time I was so young and also very unknown and i think that comes with a lot of benefits because the top players at the time you know they will have something to lose when they play against you and you kind of have that freedom to just swing and to play and also the the advantage of them not knowing how you play and you know where your strengths and weaknesses are i was also just enjoying my time like day by day i genuinely felt like i was on holiday because i was at school all the time like and i just finished um secondary school that summer and then in september instead of going to uni just had that insane result so i, I yeah my gap year started pretty well <laughs> I do remember as well that when you won the US Open, you were quite surprised because yeah. you actually packed to, to leave after a few days or yeah. something. So you had to extend your stay. But, yeah. but look, at, at the end of the day, you harnessed all of those qualities together and you scooped the biggest prize or one of the biggest prizes in tennis. And no one can ever take that away from you. But one of the things that we know from your experience, from life in general and indeed in business, is that there are the highs and the lows. And part of that learning curve is knowing how to balance the two factors. How have you done that? Yeah, I think I've come to accept, you know, everyone talks about trying to find an equilibrium that's relatively, you know, stable. The peaks and troughs aren't so spread. And I think that's something that I am aiming towards right now. And it's one of my goals to just try and level out and be a little bit more consistent and stable, which is something that I've been able to do um, better this year which I'm which I'm proud of but I think also I've accepted that with the result that I had and reaching the highest of highs of tennis of you know sport I think it's inevitably going to come with some of the lowest lows as well and I think it's a trade-off that I'm beginning to accept more uh, I think just the way that I want it it was I wasn't prepared the people around me weren't prepared and I think now I'm I'm starting to put better things in place around me and um, yeah hopefully that will help in, in staying a little bit more consistent. Mm. I mean look the thing is you have shown tremendous resilience in, in your career because you're right a lot of things have happened because yes there have been defeats but let's not forget that there have also been injuries sadly that is the curse of the elite athlete but you still manage to to come out intact emotionally. Where does that resilience come from? And how have you managed to, to nurture it, particularly when you've had to deal with the injuries, the fact that they've kept you off the circuit? And when you do physically recover, you've got to get your game back to where it was before and beyond. Yeah, it's not easy. I was out for eight months. Um, I had three surgeries and I, you know, the rehab wasn't as straightforward as everyone kind of planned. Initially, the return to play was only meant to be four months and ended up being double um, because I came back a bit too quickly and then did more damage. So I think I also learned a lesson in patience and, and trying to brush things. And I think in terms of coming back, you, it takes a while to get up to the, the speed of the game, the match is different to the practice as well and introducing the unpredictability. So I think now I'm, I'm just, yeah, gr more grateful for my health and results and stuff because I, I have a few small injury niggles that, you know, set you out for like one week, two weeks. And in the grand scheme of things, they're really annoying, but they're nothing compared to, you know, three major surgeries. And uh, you only really realize when, you're on the sidelines watching everything go past you. And yeah, it was difficult. I just had to shut it off and I actually couldn't watch anything. But the thing is, you, you have you have shut it off and, and you, you are coming back and you're getting stronger. So long may that continue. But also as well, I mean, you know, how important is family when it comes to 
nurturing that resilience? Yeah, my mom instilled amazing values and amazing qualities into me, you know, from a young age. And um, I think she always just kind of used the simple but effective phrase of Dory, who just goes, keep, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And, you know, from when I was like five until now, even that's that's what she'll she'll repeat to me and um, I think I've just seen her as such a great example of overcoming so many adversities and pushing through and not even complaining about it and I think that's something that you know I do I keep everything you know pretty internal and I don't show much about what's going on and I think that's a really good quality that I'm not having massive outbursts on the court but um, yeah having having different ways to release those emotions, um, you know, behind closed doors is, is also a big lesson that my mom taught me. Oh, and and and, th- and thank and thank her for that too because obviously that's that's really helped to sustain you. But this is a slightly unfair question, so please forgive me. But I'm going to put you on the spot because we've been talking a great deal about resilience. But what does it mean to you, and why is it important as a quality? In other words, what is your definition? of resilience. I told you it was unfair, didn't I? (laughs) I'd say my definition of resilience is that moment where you genuinely feel like you can't pick yourself up, where you feel, you know, unable to like get out the house, unable to do anything. Um, You feel like there's everything stacked against you, like the greatest weight on your shoulders and, you know, all the plans that you have that day or everything that you need to do, like it just seems like the world's biggest task. And I think resilience to me is is honestly just like trying to win the day as much as possible. And when you're in a great space, winning the day might mean you've smashed like eight tasks, you've gone for a run, you're doing all of the product productive things but other days I think especially when you're at that moment is winning the day is getting out the house doing one of those eight things and taking that as a massive boost and positive and and slowly slowly I think you take a little bit more hope a little bit more desire a bit more spark and and then get back to kind of where you were and I think for me that's my definition because I've felt all of those things. I think it's a definition that a lot of business people would also relate to as well, because really it, it's encapsulated in, in in that thought really that life is is never a straight line. Yeah, you have you have twists and turns, etc. But somehow you have to keep the focus. Yeah, I think also it's important to to know your worth. I think for me that's something that I'm actually very good at. Like I know my worth, and I know that when I strike, like it's it's going to be really big because I've done it before and. You know, I know I'm going to do it again and I'm still, you know, only 21 years old. So I think knowing your worth and not settling because, you know, opportunities come and you can easily take it because it's in the moment you're unsure or you're doubting in the future how how high you can go and with the with the current like situation that you're in. But I think I don't settle, you know, I'd rather have nothing because I've had nothing before and wait until the time is right. Hmm, but have confidence in your vision and you will never lose. I like that. But look, you know, earlier you talked about your team. How important is the team to you? And how do you make sure that you've got the right people that you can really relate to? And above all, that they're in your corner, they're working with you and helping you wage the fight? I think something that I've learned is that no one has it all no one is perfect and it's just about prioritizing which qualities are the most important to you i think there are times where i really prioritize depth of knowledge i really prioritize content of you know what's being said to me or done around and then there are other times where i feel like i need more commitment and someone who's going to put it all on the line and ride or die with you and be in the trenches with you working through the tough times not just the good times and I think that's something that I've fluctuated between and but thankfully in a team it's not just one person you know you have a a few people around in my scenario so I think you know having someone that kind of fits the mold of each of the qualities that you're looking for is is actually really important and I think overall depth of knowledge and you know actual content only gets you so far and then 
and then everyone can kind of play at the top of the game. So it's about who you feel most inspired by in the in that moment and who is really going to get the best out of you and really squeeze the lemon when you don't want to get up and train and be like, no, you know, there's more, there's more to do, there's more to achieve than someone who you also know is going to stick with you and not just disappear. And I think, um, yeah, I'm, I'm more in that phase right now. Mm. What about your goals? I mean, you, you did touch on this, but how do you go about setting goals knowing what is realistic and and then resetting them if for some reason they don't work out or perhaps you don't exceed a particular height? Yeah, I feel like goals are ever-changing. You know, at the beginning of the year, it was, I really want to be healthy and injury-free for the rest of the year and, you know, play as close as a full season as I can and get back into this main drawer of slams. And I did achieve that. But, you know, as soon as you achieve one goal, it's like, it's very easy to just look past it and take it for granted and then be like frustrated that you're not at the next goal already. And that's something I'm super impatient. So that's something that I'm, you know, trying to work on. It's just like, okay, like actually kind of celebrate that goal that you just achieved and then you can obviously be hungry for more but don't lose sight of it because otherwise you just get it in your own head okay uh, but before we close out i want you to to give us an exclusive okay and it really is an exclusive what is the key to the perfect serve so i'm still trying to figure that out honestly like, that's the one thing that i've just not got down um but i think i think from what i'm working on right now it's like staying like up with your chin as long as you can while you're hitting the ball and not coming down. I think that's like the biggest cue that has helped me. Okay, right. So we'll we'll follow that advice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and if we do manage to defeat our opponents on on the tennis court, yeah. or the tennis court per se, okay, we'll attribute this to you. Okay, to because it's a great piece of advice which you've given to us. So make sure you copyright this. Okay. Okay, I've got it. <laughs> The chin up. In all, in the all chin aspects. up. Keep the chin up. That's the key to it. But look, Emma, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. I know you're going to be returning to your practice sessions. I hope it goes very, very well. You've given us some fantastic inspirational chat, insights, call it what you will. It has been great showing us that there is a very powerful overlap between the world of sport and business, because at the end of the day, it's all about resilience. And you have got it in spades. Good luck going forward. Thank you.